Hello friends, this is Priyanka. Today we have to draw analogous electric circuit by using false current analogy for a given mechanical system. In this video, I will give you some important tips regarding how to draw analogous circuit with differential equation. These tips you can apply for each and every question related to false current analogy. Now first we will observe what is the given mechanical system. So here two masses M1 and M2 having displacement X1 and X2. Now this M1 is connected to spring with stiffness K1 and applied force F of T is on mass M1. In between M1 and M2 there is the damper with viscous friction coefficient P1. And M2 is connected to spring with stiffness K2. Now for this mass wheels and floor there is no any friction in between them. Now we will first draw the free body diagram. So for that we will first take mass M1. Now which elements are responsible for the reaction forces because applied forces F of T. Now for this mass M1 the elements are spring with stiffness K1, damper with viscous friction coefficient P1 and inertia due to mass M1. Now we have to draw this reaction forces in the opposite direction of the applied force F of T. So I will draw here. So this K1 is on the left hand side face of this M1. So I will draw here. Reaction force due to spring that is Fk1. Then reaction force due to inertia of mass M1 that is Fm1. Then reaction force due to this damper with stiffness with a viscous friction coefficient B1 that is Fb1. So these elements are responsible for the reaction force. Now we will apply Newton's second law of motion. That is the action force is equal to sum of reaction forces. So action force F of T is applied on this mass M1. So I will write here F of T is equal to F M1 plus F B1 plus F K1. Now this reaction forces we have to define in terms of displacement. Because input is force F of T but output is in terms of displacement. So how to define this? So for the inertia force we have formula M D square X by D D square. But here instead of M I will use M1 and instead of X I will use X1. D square X1 by D D square. Then B. So for this damper it is connected in, in between M1 and M2. So we have to take the difference of the displacement. But this is the free body diagram of M1. So while taking difference we will take X1 first. So how to write? That is B1 dx1 by dt minus dx2 by dt plus Fk1. So K1 X1 because this spring is attached only with M1. So I will write here as a K1 X1. So this is the differential equation. Now we will move for the next mass. So for this mass M2 which elements we have to consider for the reaction forces. So this damper with viscous friction coefficient B1 spring with stiffness K2 and inertia force F2. So this damper is on the left hand side face of M2. So I will show here. That is F B1. Then inertia force due to M2. That is F M2. And reaction force due to K2. That is F K2. Now according to Newton's second law of motion. Sum of all reaction forces is equal to 0. So how I can write this? F M2 plus F B1 plus F K2 is equal to 0. Now what is this force related to this mass M2? That is M D square X by D T square. But here X is X2. So I will write M2 D square X2 by D T square 
plus B1. Now B1 is in between M1 and M2. So we have to take the difference. So this is the free body diagram of M2. I will take X2 first. Dx2 by dt minus Dx1 by dt plus what about spring K2? It is connected to M2 only. So I will write here K2 X2 is equal to 0. So this is the second differential equation. Now we will understand how to apply force current analogy to draw analogous electric circuit. For that if we observe the condition that is force current analogy. In mechanical system force is the input and in electrical circuit current is the input. So for that we will consider one circuit where the current is input that is RLC circuit where all the elements that is resistor, inductor and capacitor are in parallel to each other. And current that is I of T is the input to this circuit. Then output is voltage V and voltage V across resistor, inductor and capacitor is same because these elements are parallel to each other. Now how we can define this voltage V? So this voltage V is nothing but rate of change of flux phi and we can write here V is equal to d phi by dt. Now we will write these elements that is uh, resistor, inductor and capacitor in terms of voltage because input is the current I. So how we can write but voltage V is nothing but rate of change of flux that is d phi by dt. So we can write this equation I of t that is input is equal to C d square phi by dt square plus 1 by R d phi by dt plus phi by L. So this is nothing but equation for this circuit where I of t that is current is input. Now in mechanical system that is spring mass damper system we know what is the equation where the applied that is input is the applied force that is f of t is equal to m d square x by dt square plus b dx by dt plus kx. So now we will compare these two equations. Now I will give here the equation number 1 and this equation number 2. Now we have to take force current analogy. So we can say that f of t is analogous with I of t. So we will make the analogous element that is for other elements also we will apply this analogy. So M is analogous with C. Then B is analogous with 1 by R. And K is analogous with 1 by N. Now here X that is nothing but output and in this equation number 1 there is phi is nothing but output. So this equation is in terms of phi. So we can say that X is analogous with phi. But while we are going to apply this analogy then voltage is the output. So we have to convert this phi in terms of voltage. So how to apply so if we observe we have to write this x that is displacement x in terms of voltage. So phi, how we can define this phi? V is equal to d phi by dt. So if I take integration of on both sides then this integration and this derivation get cancelled. Then phi is equal to integration of v dt. So I have to write x is equal to integration of v dt. So we have to take this instead of x. Now what we have to take instead of dx by dt in mechanical system. So dx by dt is nothing but d phi by dt and d phi by dt is nothing but v. Now how we can take this instead of d square x by dt square. So for d square x by dt square we have to take dv by dt. Suppose I have taken the derivation on this both sides then it will become d square x by dt square which is equal to dv by dt. Now from this analogy we understand that we have to take all these elements that is instead of m we 
have to take C. Instead of B, we have to take 1 by R. Instead of K, we have to take 1 by L. And instead of x, integration of v dt. Instead of dx by dt, we have to put v. And instead of d square, x by dt square, we have to take d, v by dt. Now we will move for the differential equation. Now we have two differential equations. So this is the first differential equation. So here, we have to take care for the suffix 1 and 2. Now instead of m1, I will take c1. So c1. Now d square x1 by dt square. So I will take dv1 by dt. Plus b1. Instead of b1 I will take 1 by r1. dx by dt. That means I will take v1 and minus dx2 by dt. That means I will take minus v2. So we have to take, we have to take into consideration suffix. Plus k1 x1. So instead of k1 I will take 1 by l1. And instead of x1. X1 means integration of v1 dt. Which is equal to. Now f of t. f of t is nothing but i of t. So this is the differential equation. And from this equation we have to draw the electrical circuit. So for that we will study first these elements. Now we have to consider the coefficients for each of these elements. So from this coefficient we will understand that along this C1 there is voltage V1. So I will write along this C1 there is voltage V1. Then along L1 there is voltage V1. Then along R1 there is V1 and V2. That means we can say that R1 is in between voltage V1 and V2. And for this L2, the voltage is V2. 
So if we observe C2 and L2 is having same voltage V2. That means these two elements are parallel to each other. And R1 is in between V1 and V2. So we have to connect this R1 in series with C2 and L2. So I will again draw the next electrical network. So for this, uh, for C2 and L2, I will connect this in parallel. Here is C2 and this is L2. Both are in parallel. Now for this parallel connection, we have to show voltage V2 because for parallel connection, voltage is same. Now R1 is there. It is in between V1 and V2. So V1, I have to connect this R1 in series. So here is R1. So at this point there is voltage V2. And at this start point there is voltage V1. So I will show this voltage with this straight line. So we can say that at start point, starting point of R1, V Sorry, here V1. V1 is there and here V2 is there. That is R1 is in between V1 and V2. And after that L2 and C2 in parallel. Now we will combine these two electrical circuit. Now first we have to take C1 then L1. And along these two elements we have to show voltage V1. And R1 is in between V1 and V2. So after that we will draw R1 in series with this C1 and L1. Then after R1 we have to take L2 and V2. L2 and capacitor C2 and along these two elements voltage V2 is same. So we can say that here if we observe at the start point of R1 there is voltage V1 and at this end point there is voltage V2. That is R1 is in between voltage V1 and V2. So this is the analogous electrical network.